December is a beautiful time of year for me. It's a season of preparation and anticipation, of, of getting things ready. You can almost smell the scent of hope in the air. Our family begins preparing for Christmas uh, by decorating our tree. It's one of the major uh, portions of our preparations at home. Uh, the first step in our household is to rearrange the furniture a little bit. You know, we don't keep our tree up year-round, and so we have to move some things out of the way and rearrange others. And do we put the same, do we put it in the same place that we did last year? Do we try a new location? It's always a little bit of an adventure to make all the pieces work. Over the last several years, we've had an artificial tree in our home, and, and this uh, weekend we'll hauled the box out of the basement, um, pieced it together, and it's there in our main room. And it's always a bit of an operation to do that as well, right? Uh, it's, it's a challenge to get it put together because it's a once-a-year thing. And uh, this year, there was maybe an average level of struggle, so not too bad this year. Of course, next comes the decorations, the most important part, perhaps, of the tree. Lights, of course, and then ornaments of every kind. Uh, Nicole and I still have some uh, from when we were young, and, and John and Anne have made their own as they have been growing up, created their own over the years. And, and each year when we travel or if we're on vacation, we pick up an ornament from a special trip or occasion that, that marks another year for our family. And unwrapping and uncovering every one is a journey of remembering. Each one has meaning and memory. And then where will it go on the tree? Each memory has a place, a distinct part in our mind, and yet the tree is decorated each year just a little bit differently. And, and when I think about the tree, I also think about our lives. Every year, either reflecting back on the things that have gone past or looking forward to the things that will come ahead. What will happen close together this year? What will be unexpectedly beautiful? What, what will break by accident? What events will occur in, in which we need to find our place? We need to find our place again. The physical act of making space for the tree in our living area helps me make the mental and emotional and spiritual space for the coming of Christ in the days to come. And this is part of this season as well, this season of Advent, this, this idea of these weeks of preparation. The early church mothers and fathers designed this, as, had the great wisdom to set aside this time to prepare ourselves leading up to Christmas and the birth of Jesus Christ. It was a historical event that took place in a particular time and place, and yet each year Christ comes new to us again. And we remember and anticipate the day when Christ will come in final victory and during these weeks, we are making space for Jesus. When we gather for worship, when we light the candles, when we hear these stories that we've heard year and year again. This year, we're exploring what it means that God sent Jesus to us and the ways that God sends us into the world. And today, our focus is that uh, Jesus sets us free. This idea of, of preparation is, is a season that we call Advent. It's the name that the church has given to, uh, to making space for this, uh, to this time of making space and preparation. It's a time when we pause to remember and celebrate the birth of Jesus. It's a time to celebrate with grateful hearts the, the incarnation, the, the being made real of God's love in Jesus Christ. And, and we journey through these weeks with awe and wonder at the incredible love of God. 
We can marvel at God's choice to pour God's self into the world through Jesus Christ for us to honestly know that love and to experience liberation that sets us free. We experience a different life uh, that shapes our ideas, our thoughts, and our actions, and we seek to bear witness to that love that was born at Christmas so long ago. Advent is a time when we name and remember our longing for and our need for forgiveness. As we draw those, got those ornaments out and put them on the tree, we remembered. And, and again, at Advent, we get uh, ourselves prepared and remember that we are in need of forgiveness and restoration and redemption. And while we wait, Jesus calls us into the world to participate in acts of compassion, preparing the way for God's love to be known by all who need to hear the good news, to have their sight restored, and to experience freedom. During this season, we prepare our own lives for one of the most transformative understandings of Jesus' coming, his mission to set us free. Last week, we remembered that God sent Jesus to, be, to the unsuspecting, to the unqualified, and the undeserving We considered how this was true for the shepherds and also recognized that it's true for us today. Jesus was sent not only to people long ago and far away, but for all the world and for us. And God sends Jesus to make love real, to offer hope, to bring peace, and to share joy. Now, there are times in our lives when, I don't know about you, but there are times when, when I miss Jesus because we haven't really understood how God is in our midst. Our own lives need to be set free from the perceptions and the assumptions that we can make about other people and the assumptions that we make about how God is going to work in the world. When we allow Jesus and the stories of this season to soak into our hearts and minds, we begin to notice that God acted in an incredibly uh, uh, unsuspected way then, and God continues to act in unsuspected ways now. We begin to notice that the light of Christ is not just for people that might gather in a sanctuary on Sunday morning, but that the light of Christ is in all people, that each one is created in God's image, no matter how dim or how bright that light may be. Too often we're caught up looking at the circumstances that other people are in. These circumstances can blind us from seeing the truth about each person, the truth that the image of God is alive in each one, in all people. It's not just some people for whom we are invited to love. Jesus sets us free and opens the door for us to love all people. We see in the ministry and the teaching of Jesus that loving our neighbors means meeting people where they are. It means looking into their circumstances through what may be their life at the moment to see who they really are. And God invites us to a reflection of unconditional and accepting love in their lives. God's love is the good news that frees, that brings peace, and that heals. We can be set free to love others in a real way. And if we can see the truth that that God loved us before we took our first breath, and that there's nothing that can separate us from God's love, then we'll be able to love and accept each other more fully. We'll also be able to help others see the light in themselves, to begin to change a self-understanding that says uh, from instead what the world may tell them, what their circumstances may say, that they're not worthwhile, that they don't uh, have what they need uh, for success or to be accepted and loved, and to say, No, no, that's not true. You are enough. You are loved. There is light in you. God created us in God's image. Seeing ourselves in that way can remove the oppressive weight of our guilt and our shame. It can heal our brokenness and free us from those fears that block our relationships with other people. Changing our perspective to see others as God sees them has the power to reconcile communities of people, communities like Topeka and this part of Topeka that are fractured by the sins of racism, elitism, sexism, and any other thing that denies the sacred worth or the dignity of others. If we truly see God in our midst, we'll be able to love our neighbors and ourselves in ways that are life-giving, that are empowering, that restore our community and restore ourselves. The scripture reading for today is one of the most profound passages of scripture that portrays Jesus as a liberator. 
At the synagogue, Jesus comes to the front, and the assigned reading for the day is the prophecy of Isaiah. It's an interpretation of his own ministry is how he uses that text, stating that he himself was the one that was sent to preach the gospel or the good news to those whose life chances were stifled economically or socially, physically or mentally. And this mission that Jesus identified with, we also are to share in. God sent Jesus to us. And Jesus sends us into the world to offer words that heal, that empower, and that set people free. One small example of empowering others took place right here at Susanna Wesley this last week. Uh, Last Wednesday was our Countdown to Christmas Festival, a a fantastic opportunity for children and families to come share a time together, an evening of making memories. Uh, There were all kinds of volunteers that helped make it happen. There was a workshop. There were shrinky dinks to be made. There were ornaments and Advent countdown cookies and hot chocolate. The Christmas story on video right here in the sanctuary, a story time, a Christmas shop, gift wrapping. There was all kinds of things, most of them designed to create opportunities for adults and children to be together together whether it's in the same family or in other families, that they might work across the generations and help make memories. And let me tell you, if you haven't seen a Shrinky Dink, those things are pretty cool. Uh, You should try it out. Uh, Really, all of the activities were great. But but particularly the the Christmas shop. Uh, This Christmas shop is designed to empower children. It creates an opportunity for children to select a gift for others in their household and then to have it wrapped. Many children don't have the chance to surprise uh, others in their family with a gift, and, and the Christmas shop empowered them to be able to give it to others that might, to give to others in ways that might not otherwise be possible. The Christmas shop was an opportunity for children at this event to be able to give to others. And we also have opportunities to be able to offer gifts for others. The giving tree in the atrium was put in place several weeks ago. It's been decorated with ornaments that have specific requests from families in our community that find themselves in need this year for whatever reason. The giving tree helps create a gift-giving opportunity that would not otherwise be possible. It's a way to set ourselves free from focusing only on ourselves and what we might receive. It's a chance to help empower those that will receive that they are enough that they are loved, and that this is indeed a time to celebrate. One of the powerful ways that Jesus frees us is to affirm the truth that we are all created with gifts and talents and abilities to participate in God's work in the world. Daily, Jesus invites us to come and see what he is up to in the world. Some of my favorite passages in the Gospels are the call narratives in which Jesus invites the disciples to come and to follow him. It was a standard at the time for rabbis, for for Jewish teachers or religious leaders, to intentionally gather together a team of women and men with whom they could share a mission and equip them to live it out. Calling the disciples isn't what made this story distinct. What's particularly compelling about these stories is the peculiar nature of the people that Jesus called. They were not the ones that were qualified for the job. Jesus' disciples, perhaps like the shepherds, didn't have the right education. They didn't have the right social status or political power or even act ethically all the time. And still, Jesus called them and sent them into the world, sent them into the surrounding towns and cities and said, go and share this good news with others. God was able to use them as they surrendered their lives to Jesus, that they set aside what they were doing and focused on Jesus. The first disciples played a significant role in Jesus' ministry. He called them from where they were, set them free from those things that bound them, and sent them out into the world. And just like that, God is still at work in that way today. God invites us to step out of our normal and everyday work, to step into this world, this kingdom of love and forgiveness, of grace and peace and joy. And then sends us out to invite others to join us in that place the place where all are accepted, the place that that sometimes seems to come around only once a year when, when we sing songs like this and when the lights are out and the tree is up. And yet the good news of Jesus Christ is that this is a place that exists all year long, 
This is a kingdom that God is the a kingdom of God that's coming on earth as it is in heaven. And this season reminds us of that, that we can be set free from those things that bind us to focusing on ourselves, to focusing on only what's in front of us, and to remind us that there is light, that there is life, and that there is love, and that we are sent, that we are set free to share that love with others. And so I invite you in the days ahead to join this mission of liberation, to join in these words of Isaiah, to go on the mission that Jesus sent his first disciples, that Jesus still sends us on today, to look for new life springing up all around us, to feel new life in your own soul, and to let God's grace help you lay down the things that hold you, that hold you back from a life that really is life from a life of love and joy and peace and hope and let Jesus set us free. Will you pray with me? Oh God, you continue to be at the work in our world and we are grateful. We are amazed and we're blessed at the ways that you show up. We confess that we don't always get it, O oh God, and, and we ask that you forgive us of our sins and that you send us out by the power of your Holy Spirit to share your love, to share your light, and to live as your people on earth as in heaven. We offer ourselves to you, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. During the season of Advent, we're focusing our seek, share, and serve moments, uh, pointing towards our offering on Christmas Eve. We're preparing to uh, give away 100% of our Christmas Eve offering. And so for those of you that are regular members of our church, we invite you to give um, during our weekly offerings for, to prepare for that. We'll be giving away 100% of our offering to share with those in need, to, to help us set free those who might be oppressed and to set us free from the expectations that the world might place on us. We're using some resources from the Advent Conspiracy, and you can find more on our website or on our social media sites. And we have a video that will help introduce some of these ideas to you. So let's take a look. <laughs> 